Hi everyone. This video focuses on the midterm lab assignment for Net 125 online. <clears throat> the midterm lab assignment is kind of like a cumulative lab that uh, kind of culminates all the stuff that we've learned through chapter six, which covers everything from configuring our housekeeping commands like passwords and host names and, uh, you know, line consoles or remote VTY lines, um, all the way to our IP addressing for each interface. And it also covers one very important topic of how we lay out our networks. So I opened up and downloaded our midterm lab assignment student files from Moodle. Okay, and we have a PDF document with the instructions, and we have a um, packet tracer assignment over here to the right. All right, now over to the left here, we can we we have our addressing table. So there's no need to subnet anything in this assignment. The only thing we need to figure out, really important, is what are our default gateways here for each of our devices. All right, so. If we look at step one, the first thing we need to do is cable the devices together according to the topology above. So when you look at the layout of the topology, it gives us the port net, uh, numbers and names if necessary for our Cisco uh, routers and switches. And then we have our end devices over here. So uh, it says be sure to use the appropriate cable choices as well. Um, you know, everything here is different devices that are connected together. So for instance, a PC to a switch uses a straight through cable. A switch to a router uses a straight through cable. Remember, light devices use crossover cables. And of course, if you're trying to just configure a uh, router or a switch from a PC, but not really have connectivity, then you want to use a console cable. So for this one, we're going to choose our cable option here, the lightning bolt symbol. And we're going to choose the copper straight through for every connection. So if we look here, we've got student A to the Cisco lab switch. So we want to click on student A. And remember, we want to use the fast Ethernet uh, connection. The RS-232, remember, is for our um, console cable. But this is not a console cable. So we want to click on fast Ethernet 0. And then we click on our Cisco lab switch. And we can choose any of these ports that are fast Ethernet because uh, they're just, again, like plug and play type ports as long as we configure it later. So we're going to plug this one into 0, 1. Student B computer, we're going to plug it from the fast Ethernet port to fast Ethernet 2. OK. Then we're going to cable our Cisco lab switch. Now this one you do need to pay attention to the uh, port name and number. For this one, if we look in our diagram over here, it's G01. So we're going to use the G01 port, gigabit ethernet 01, to the gigabit ethernet 00 port on our router. Now you notice those are red. We have not configured those yet. You do have to configure ports on the switch and router for those to uh, come together. Then we're going to cable G01 on the router to G02 on the English Studio switch. And we are going to cable Fast Ethernet 01 to the Fast Ethernet of Student C. And we're going to cable Fast Ethernet 02 to the fast Ethernet zero of student D computer. So we've got everything cabled, okay? The second one says fill in the missing information in the address and table above uh, based on the address and scheme listed. The default gateways are missing in the address and table. So I cannot type in this PDF, but hopefully you can see it and write it down for yourself. So the Cisco lab switch, we've got VLAN one, right? And it is in 172.10.20.35. So I'm going to draw a little bubble here on our field color. The outline, let's do uh, blue. Okay. So and remember, every port on a router divides, uh, that port divides everything connected to that one port into a subnet is the technical term or a separate network okay so for instance everything in this bubble here 
Let me drag it over just a little bit. Okay, everything included in this bubble, which is that one port to the left side of the NCC router, all the way over to the Cisco Lab switch and extending out to student A and student B computer are in one subnet or network. Okay, so I'm gonna put just a little note here. This is one subnet slash network over here. Okay, and I'm gonna draw another one. This time I'll make it, uh, let's do red. Okay. And over here, okay, in the red bubble we've got here, okay, which includes the right side of the NCC router, the English Studio Switch, Student D computer, and the Student C computer is a, another subnet or network. Okay, it, when it, when I put it in that bubble, that means it cannot communicate with anything outside of that bubble without involving something like a router. But everything in that one bubble must follow the same addressing scheme. So you'll see what we're talking about in a minute. So, for instance, uh, the NCC router, this left side here, which is G00, if we notice on our addressing table, is 172.10.20.1. And it has a 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. It does not need a default gateway because it is the default gateway. All right. So this 172.10.20.1, this uh, address on this router, is going to be the default gateway for everything in this blue bubble. Okay. It is the default gateway for everything because to leave this blue bubble is got to go through this one interface. All right. To get to, let's say the red bubble, same thing here for the red bubble or the red subnet network, everything in this one bubble, it's default gateway is going to be 172.10.30.1 because that's G. If we look G zero, G01 on the right side, okay? So everything, like if student C wants to contact student A, all the way on the other side, student C has got to go through this router. So it needs to know what is my default gateway. And that gateway is basically meaning it's gateway to the rest of the internet, the rest of the world, however you want to look at it, right? So here, when we talk about what is the default gateway, the Cisco Lab switch is over here to the left. Its default gateway is going to be 172.10.20.1. That's the default gateway for the Cisco Lab switch, student A, and student B. Pretty much everything in that blue circle. Okay. 172.10.30.1, which is on the right side of the NCC router, is the default gateway for everything in this bubble, which is the English Studio switch, the student C computer, and the student D computer. Okay. So we have to make sure that we assign that appropriately throughout the network. Okay. So again, Every interface on a router divides it up that way. A switch does not work that way. Just any every interface on a router. Okay, so I'm gonna leave those bubbles up there just so we can. It doesn't affect anything, and you can put them up there if you would like to. But we're just gonna do it for the sake of this lab and seeing what everything uh, looks like. Okay. Now, uh, again, fill that information in on your chart, and we'll do it as we go through the lab. So first, we're going to configure the general housekeeping configurations for each device. The tasks considered housekeeping are configuring a host name, console password of Cisco, a telnet password of Cisco, encrypted user uh, password of class, and a banner or message of the day that reads authorized access only. Okay, so let's go to the NCC router first. Okay, and I'm going to type enable and config T to go in configuration mode and it wants me to set a host name all right so a host name would be host name NCC router now remember your host names cannot contain spaces okay so if you get an error there that may be why all right the next thing you'll see it change here to NCC router Okay, the next thing we're going to do is set a console password of Cisco. So remember, you do that with line console, or you can abbreviate it con zero password Cisco. And then remember, we have to type the word login, okay, to force it to use that password. Okay, 
The next one set a telnet password of Cisco. The telnet password, remember we do line VTY, zero through four or zero space four. That means we have five channels that people can remotely log into. If you think about it, that's probably more than plenty of remote people logging into your router at any given point at the same time. Okay, because it assigns them a channel as they log in, zero, one, two, three, and four, which are five numbers. So we set the password here, just the same password, Cisco log in okay uh, an encrypted user password of class remember to do that we do enable secret class remember enable password will not be encrypted but it's enable secret class okay and if you wanted to you could encrypt all passwords remember with service password encryption I didn't note that on this one but that's always good to do oh. I put my dash in the wrong spot. Remember, if you ever forget, you can use your question mark. All right. Uh, and then finally, a banner or message of the day that reads authorized access only. So I do banner MOTD and then in quotation marks, authorized access only. In quotation. Okay. Now. Remember, this is not this is not one of the labs that have like a little ticker going to make sure you got everything. This is something I'm going to manually grade for you guys. So, um, you know, I know it's a little bit rougher doing it that way, but it really kind of makes you rely on your own skills. And I know you guys have them. So, um, especially if you're watching this video, so we finished all the housekeeping commands for the NCC router. So I'm going to put that one aside and let's do it for the Cisco lab switch as well. So enable. Config T, host name, Cisco lab switch, remember no spaces, uh, line con zero, password Cisco, login. For the VTY lines, line VTY04 or telnet, password Cisco, and login. Uh, and we can encrypt the passwords, service password dash encryption uh, and then finally the message or the uh, encrypted user password of class enable secret class and banner MOTD authorized access only all right now we're going to minimize that one and move over to the English studio switch for our last housekeeping configurations and again, we call them housekeeping because they're the mundane stuff that we do all the time. They serve an importance for the way things look, but not necessarily for connectivity. So hostname, English Studio Switch, no spaces, line con zero, password Cisco, login, line VTY04, password Cisco, login, and enable secret class to set the encrypted user password of class, service password encryption, and banner MOTD, authorize access only. All right, so now let's look at step four. Configure the NCC router G00 and G01 interfaces with the correct addressing information and be sure they're turned on. Now, up here at the top, we've gotten our addressing table. It already laid out for us. So we're going to use our skills to configure the interface that we learned in a couple chapters ago. So we do interface G00. Okay. And then we're going to do IP add for IP address 172.10.20.1 space 255.255.255.0. You can also set a description here. And the reason that uh, when you do a show run, it can kind of show you like which side is which. So we could put like description, um, Cisco lab subnet. All right, so you can tell that it's connected to the left side of the NCC router. And then to turn it on, remember we do no shut or no shutdown. Okay? So we're going to exit out of that one, and now we're going to go into G01 interface G01. 
IP add 172.10.30.1255.255.255.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
or to send student A something, you got to think about what pass it's going to take. It's going to go to the English Studio Switch, then it's going to go up to the NCC router. Well, it's not going to know how to go up to the NCC router if it does not have the IP address set right here for its default gateway. Same thing for the left side. All right. Now it says verify end-to-end -end connectivity. Um, it says what command would you use to accomplish this task? You can do it one of two ways. Um, Cisco Packet Tracer has this little envelope button here and you can click from let's say student A to student C. Right? You need to expand out in the bottom right hand corner to be able to kind of see this stuff though. Um, I'm just going to make this full screen so you can see it better. Uh, and it says failed the first time. Okay, If you double click the red in the middle here Sometimes it may fail. Uh, if you double click it, it'll resend it and it should say successful. If you double click this maybe more than four or five times and it still says failed, you need to go troubleshoot what may be wrong. Okay. And same thing, you can do it from student D back to student A. Uh, you want to make sure every device can talk to each other and you should see it fill up as successful all the way across and down. The other option is what command could you use? You could go to the command prompt of any PC and do ping, and then let's just choose an IP address of another one. So student A, let's send it to student C. Student C's IP address was 172.10.30.50. Okay, hit enter, and you see it says reply, 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 and it says four sent, four received, lost zero. So that's good, okay? And you can do that to any IP address in this network if you wanted to, if you wanted to ping student D, just hit the up arrow and come back up, put it as 30.51, hit enter, and it should come back as well. And you can do that from any computer, uh, even to the router interface, right? You could do ping 172.10.20.1, right? That'll ping just from PCA to the edge, the left edge of this NCC router still in the blue bubble, and it should come back as 100% received, no loss, 0% loss. The first time you do it, it'll say fail because usually it'll get like one out of four, but then if you redo it, it'll work 100%. Okay? Uh, and then it says save your running configurations. Remember on each device to save your running configurations. Okay? If you back all the way out to where you just have the pound symbol, if you do copy, run, start, hit enter, enter again, and you will save your settings. So you can go to each device and do that copy, you gotta exit out first to this point copy run start enter enter got it same thing here copy run start enter enter and you are done all right so that is it again um this kind of shows you what we should know up to this point in the class um the last things that we're going to kind of add on is not too many more configurations, but how do you come up with this table up here all by yourself, all right, just given a starting address. So um, we'll see about how important this subnet mask is. For instance, when we're talking about these bubbles right here, if we can kind of continue the conversation for a second, uh, this subnet mask tells us that the starting IP address here is 172.10.20.0 for this network and the end is 172.20.10.20.255 and we'll see that going forward. But we'll stop right there for today with all the configurations. Make sure you get this lab in and submit it to Moodle and if you have any questions please let me know. Thank you.